episode two of the morning drive. 8.25 in the morning. I'm actually heading to a you know, Cars and Coffee, and Cars and Donut, whatever. I'm not really into donuts. I am into coffee, though. Um, I'm heading to a car show this morning. Um, looking at a few of the topics online. I know I'm a little late to the party on this one. But the model year 2020 Camaro LT1, basically the stripper version with a V8, which I think myself included, a lot of people were asking for for a long time, uh, have a you know stripped out version, I don't need leather seats, maybe you know you're interested in a drag pack or what, I, I don't, you know, you're inter interested in drag racing, you want the lightest car, uh, with a V8, you don't need, you know, giant Brembo's, you don't need, uh, you know, the front bumper, I, I don't know, whatever makes this car different, it's mostly a, a stripper version, less options, um, I heard somebody refer to it as a, <laughs> a zero LS or something, or a zero SS, that's what it was, a zero SS instead of a one SS or a two SS, that's, clever um, and it's about right um, I personally I think the car is gonna sell well I, like I said I, I think it's a car that a lot of us a lot of people want it um, it's gonna be a good kind of a good splice of the entry-level V8 you know it, it, you can option out a V6 or a four-cylinder turbo car fair super high and it's it's crazy you know, leather seats and all the jazz, but with a four-cylinder. Um, now, on the cap, the, the other side of that coin is I'm I'm actually really surprised that the LTG, the two-liter turbo Camaro, didn't sell or hasn't sold as well as I thought it would. Um, I was my first gig at General Motors was a verification engineer for the Cal powertrain calibration and for the four-cylinder turbo cars and man that I, I thought that car was gonna sell a bajillion units the v6 car turns out was uh, we'll say the right mix in between SS a lot of v6 cars sold matter of fact the, the number of v6 co cars sold for a while there, but they were outselling the SS, which is crazy to me. I never thought that the the V6 or four-cylinder turbo would outsell the SS, but combined they did, and the V6 alone outsold the SS, you know, every so often. You know, it would kind of volley back and forth. They were both at like 30% of the share of Camaro sales, which was crazy. Uh, but I thought, personally, the the LTG car would sell a lot, a lot more. Um, but anyway, get back to the 2020 stuff. You know, the the news has been crazy. Uh, Camaro getting canceled in 2023, and the Z28 got the axe, and all kinds of crazy shit. You know, believe everybody's gonna believe what they want to believe. Everybody is sourced, right? The the original article, he's apparently well connected, which is fine. Um, it's actually, I'm actually more bummed about the fact that there's people inside GM leaking this shit because it kind of ruins it for people like myself now who are outside of the gate of GM. And to me, it's a genuine thing that I want to be surprised and I want to be excited, you know about the new cars coming out and you know you kind of get it kind of gets ruined when people leak shit but it is what it is I'm sure that whoever's leaking info is getting paid a few bucks here and there you know to snap a picture on your phone undercover which you're not supposed to do and send it to a magazine it's bullshit in my opinion but whatever um, I have personally I have my sources within GM but that's da that's a dangerous game to play because if, if you really wanted to deep dive it you could figure out who I'm talking to 
you know, there's only so many places within GM for people to hide and take a picture. You know, if it's a person that frequents that building, they'll eventually figure it out. So, I don't know, dangerous game to play. But, uh, again, you know, everybody's got their sources, you know, the, the about the Camaro being canceled or the the next day. Camaro's not canceled. What the, f- what the fuck are you talking about? The Z28's canceled, and then somebody comes out the next day. Bullshit. My uncle's brother-in-law's sister who's related to the guy and who's roommates with the person that's working on the Z28. There is a Z28 coming. Whatever. I don't really care. I mean... At the end of the day, would I like to see a Z28? Sure, I'm a Z28 guy. But it's not going to totally ruin, you know, ruin the car for me. Because me personally, I like the 6th Gen. I think the 6th Gen is a fucking awesome car. The interior is amazing. I think the exterior styling is great. The 2019 refresh that everybody got so, like, fucking up in arms about... I mean, whatever. That was a big bump. Whatever. I mean, from my standpoint, it didn't... I mean, it's different. Don't get me wrong. And for me personally, the where the bow tie was placed in the bumper, I thought that was kind of like, uh, whatever, I guess. You know, that's kind of a weird place to put it. But, you know, what the fuck do I know? But it wasn't going to stop me from buying one and more to that point in a second but say I was in the market for buying a new Camaro you know I tend to fall on the certified used into the spectrum just because you know the depreciation of buying a new car but that's a whole nother topic episode whatever um, it wasn't going to stop me from buying one of the fucking things I mean it, it, it looked fine and to tell you the truth you know when I was I test drove one of the 19 SS1 LEs, and you know what the fuck I can't see from inside the car? The front bumper. The car is an amazing performance bargain. It's almost, in the segment, it's almost untouchable, the SS1 LE. So, from my perspective, when I'm driving it, and I'm having a blast corner carving, or, you know, if I take it to the road course, I can't see the front bumper from where I'm sitting. So who gives a shit? Whatever. But everybody, but you know, you got what you wanted. The 2020 refresh is out. Sweet. It looks fine. I mean, hell, the bow tie has moved into the, what I claim to be the correct position. You know? So that's great. Whatever. <clears throat> the bow tie's moved back where it's supposed to be, you know, in the upper portion of the grill putting it in the bumper was kind of weird but whatever um so i think the 2020 stuff is going to sell pretty well if everybody really actually was all pissed off about the 19 refresh then the 2020 should ease your fears and you should go buy one and that's the thing about the people on the internet bitching about the car 90 percent of those people they were going to fucking buy one anyway they're still rolling around in a fifth gen They're not in the market for uh, a new 6th gen anyway. So, quit bitching about it. I mean, I, I personally don't care that you don't like the car because you weren't going to go buy one to begin with. And you yelled about, I would never buy one, I would never buy one. Like, okay, well, GM fixed it. Now go buy one. Like, well, I don't have the money. Like, okay. Anyway. Um, I'm of the opinion that the car not selling well has nothing to do with the way that it looks or the styling. I think the styling's awesome. And for the people that are bitching about, you know, the the styling of the car, go drive one. Like, I can't, I can't fathom somebody driving one of those cars and being like, ah, no, I don't know, man. My fifth gen is still better. Is it? Because the 6th gen, like every every trim level whoops ass on the 5th gen trim level that would normally be above it, 
right? So the so the base model SS and a fifth gen, like that car couldn't handle its way out of a cardboard box. And then so you have you take the sixth gen SS and it's like light years ahead of that car. And then like the SS 1LE, the fifth gen gets its ass whooped by the base SS of a 6th gen, and so on and so forth. And then you have like, uh, the Z so go all the way up to the end of the spectrum, a ZL1 1LE, like, I'm in a Z28, like the ZL1 1LE just makes this car almost obsolete. But I just like driving this car. And oh yeah, I, I'm one of the guys that I'm not gonna bitch about it because I can't afford a Z01 1LE anyway. I want to, I want one for the record. And I sort of have intentions to get one. Um, it's gonna have to wait. That's bright. So, sorry, I'm kind of focusing. There's a 18 wheeler in front of me that's like dropping off rocks. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, so, I don't know, it's, I think the 2020 Camaro is going to do really well. I think the LT1 uh, trim level is going to sell awesome. I highly encourage everybody to go look at it and drive it. You know, that there's your entry level uh, entry level V8 Camaro that doesn't cost $40,000 or whatever, however much an optioned out 6 gen costs. I know they can get optioned all the way out to like 50 or something. But, I mean, who does that? So, I, I think I think the uh, good times ahead for the Camaro, regardless of what you believe is going to happen in 2023 or whatever, uh, I think there's good days ahead for the Camaro. I hope so, anyway. I definitely, myself, hope that the 2020 Camaro isn't going to be, or the 2023 isn't going to go away. If it does, then, you know, I've been there before. I was around in 2002, so been there, done that. It's not going to totally, like, destroy me because at the end of the day, there's still going to be, just like there was an 02, I could still buy an 02 Camaro in 2005. You know, I, I was driving around 4th Gens whenever the 4th Gen went away and the Camaro went on a hiatus or died or whatever you want to call it. You know, I still had Camaros, so really not that big of a deal. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it would be a total bummer because, you know, if you look at the YouTube channel, Camaro Historian, it's not a fantastic part of a car's history if it dies or goes away or goes on a hiatus. Um, but, you know, we'll see. You know, the I guess we're going to have to kind of play it by ear and see what's going to happen to the Camaro. My personal opinion is that, you know, when that time comes around, the 7th gen, I'm of the opinion that something like the Camaro would go to a hybrid platform, whether it be, you know, a four-cylinder turbo hybrid or a V8 hybrid, you know, I would think with General Motors push for electric vehicles and hybrids and, you know, emissions quality and blah, 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 I would think that you're just going to see low emissions versions of the vehicles. You know, a hybrid, all electric, that would be cool. I don't see what the big deal is about all electric cars. Um, you know, instant torque is pretty badass. At the end of the day, it's not something that you want to see. But, you know, I guess time will tell. I, I'm just of the hybrid drivetrain opinion that that's what will happen to the Camaro. But we'll see. Um, anyway, I'm going to go enjoy a car show now. You guys hang tight for more episodes. And uh, I'll get back soon. See ya.